Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 541. That's 541 of the Agostino Zynga show. I hope you're doing well wherever this may find you. I hope you're doing well wherever this may find you. If it's your first time watching the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. If you're watching via, you know, any other place, then, I don't know, do something as well. That'll help as well. If you listen via the podcast app, especially Spotify, please leave me a five-star review. That would really, really help. Spotify has a little rating system there. So if you want to leave a review, so let people know that you're enjoying the show. Man would appreciate that. And if you're doing that on podcasts, or sorry, the other podcast thing too, you can do that too. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't care what rating. Just leave me some rating so people know that you're enjoying the show. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And of course, support for your patrons. Welcome to the Patreon episode. is a bit late. It's going to drop on Monday or Monday evening. So if you listen to this in the morning, you hear the Patreon episode later on in the evening. So make sure you tune in for that one. It's going to be a review. Uh, going to be a review of the Dashno documentary that I watched. And I've got loads of feelings and thoughts about it. So if you want to check out some of my thoughts, and things about the Dashno documentary one of my favorite artists coming up contemporary artists who unfortunately passed away very young um definitely check out the Dashno documentary podcast episode i have available only on patreon at the patreon.com for just agostino you get access to all my bonus shows that usually come at the end of the week you get a bonus show every week this time the one that's coming out this week is obviously late so you're gonna hear it on monday evening so if you're already on a patreon wait for me it's coming up on monday evening um, but yeah, link in the description for you to get signed up on there. No delay. Get involved. Get involved. Woo! But yeah, apart from that, I hope you're good wherever you are. I've got myself a little nice green juice, as you can see. Yeah, nice. Yes, yeah, feeling nice. Um, currently recording on a MacBook that I fixed as well, so I'm feeling good about that. I managed to fix my uh, MacBook Pro from 2012. Now I'm going to be using that as my main station to basically record stuff like this on. I'm still going to get my Legion um sorry my lenovo legion 5 which is going to be for streaming so what i want to do with ufc streams or want to do my dj streams and have that you know have it running well then i'm going to obviously use that legion 5 when i get it but for now for just to make sure i have the ability to just record on a unit that isn't going to be used for anything else so it's going to be used for um recording and obviously my um what you call it my library of music and stuff for my record box and stuff i'm even thinking of making sure i keep my itunes just on my macbook air i don't want to mix up too many things right i just want to have things dedicated and have them where they need to be and obviously that's what i'm going to do going forward so that should be good so that was a good actually weekend spent actually i spent most of my time doing that replacing hard drives um watching many many youtube again youtube is such an amazing resource it really is it's so um it doesn't get the flowers it really needs or flowers it deserves for having that much content that you can just basically dig in and you know and usually people are really good on the and again the comments man this is why mm, it's good green juice. This is why I really I'm a bit pissed off that we don't have any comments anymore on the RA site. Resident Advisor site, honestly, back in the day used to be such a great resource because of the comments. Not just because of the features and stuff they did on there, which are obviously excellent back in the day when they had legit writers on there. Now it's just like, you know, it's some sort of fucking um, propaganda arm in it for some people in the scene. But back in the day when it was actually a platform that helped to kind of inspire, inform and maybe educate people on, you know, electronic music and dance music. Sometimes you go into comments and the comments are sometimes better than the article that was written, which was sometimes a credit to the article because it meant the article basically drove people to be passionate enough to write long essays, give you links, give you a history lesson, maybe give you the scoop on the inside of what happened on this scene, like really insightful things. And the moment that the kind of comments went away, on RA, which I do appreciate towards the end, they were getting a bit toxic, but like the entire internet, all comments are toxic. Every person's Twitter replies, if they're notable, have really questionable people on there. It's not, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it makes any sense to ban people from commenting on stuff. Do you know I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I think the whole interaction, the whole friction of people saying things is what kind of keeps us, kind of keeps the internet interesting. If, if it was just one way conversations, no one would flip and tune in. But um, YouTube comments are awesome too because sometimes if you just kind of run into an, a problem or an issue, usually because you don't follow the instructions, and I'm I'm a I'm a I'm notorious for that. Sometimes I just see the instructions, I'll just step over one because I don't think I need to do it. I think I'm special. I think I don't need to follow the steps like a flipping. If you're baking the cake, you just think, oh, I don't need to add that. It's fine. I can just use this. Then the cake comes out poorly, and you start blaming the recipe. It's like no, it's not the recipe. You messed up. Follow the bloody instructions. So um. Sometimes if you don't follow the instructions on YouTube, you have someone in the comments to say, hey, I did what you did. Here's what I did to fix it. But next time, follow the instructions. Or sometimes if you run into an issue after following the instructions, somebody's always in the comments saying, hey, like, here's what I did. Here's what helped me, blah, blah, blah. So YouTube is a great resource. The commenters are a great resource. And again, I think mostly the tech side of stuff. Um, th there is a, there's a few, I found a few smarmy people 
not smarmy, but I find a few people who are very um who get very sensitive when you talk about stuff that they really like. So for instance, Apple, Android people obviously are a bit freaky. This one time I spoke about not wanting a Denon DJ controller or something and I wanted a pioneer one just because you know pioneer is industry standard is what everyone uses in clubs and I just didn't look at that and honestly I just don't like the way then and stuff looks it just looks terrible to me it looks kind of like amateurish and I kind of said that in a podcast and somebody left a really long comment like kind of you know I wouldn't say um being annoyed but they basically kind of tried to give me a bit of a schooling in terms of like no then it's actually better because of this and this I was like oh interesting it looks like the, the the DJing kind of electronic community are a bit sensitive too when it comes to what works what doesn't work um but yeah in general tech side of stuff is amazing I got great tips on there how to replace so I basically replaced my MacBook Pro from um uh, what you call it a standard um h h h d d right a standard hard drive and then i installed a uh, solid state hard drive which is meant to be quicker it's meant to make less noise it's not the spinning disc it's not it's not really as thick as the other one that you usually get in the macbook and macbook pros from that era from like 2012 to maybe 2017 were super super customizable you could basically take them apart and you know update the ram update the graphics card update the uh, some some of them you can even take off the cd player like on mine and you could place it and put a second hard drive in there so you can basically switch between two hard drives if you wanted to um obviously i've got loads of ports on this um i told you about the ram the ram you can replace um again the keyboard's awesome probably one of the best better keyboards um it, i won't say it feels mechanical but there's a lot more give on it so it just feels a lot nicer because at the moment for work i use one of the newer macbook airs and you know again privilege don't get me wrong i'm not complaining about it but still it's just it's not the best to type on you know it kind of feels a bit weird like your fingers are kind of skidding across somewhere so i, I kind of like to travel on the 2012 and in general it's one of my most robust pieces of tech i have um, I think the only reason why it stopped working was because um, from what I can see, it wasn't even a hard drive failure. So I replaced the hard drive. It wasn't a hard drive failure. The actual failure on the Mac that I've got was that the connector that connects the way the RAM ports to the motherboard was somehow loose. And the hack that I basically found on YouTube was that what essentially you have to do, you have to basically take off the, the bottom casing. Um, remove loads of screws, take off the battery, whatever, blah, 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 remove all the cables from the motherboard. They lift the motherboard up and where the RAM kind of ports on, where the RAM cards go in, there's little, two little slots that you can put in. So you can either put max one RAM in one slot or you can split them up. So if you want to put 16 gigs, you can put eight in eight. Or if you want eight, you want four and four in each, right? And the connector that connects both of them was a bit loose. So this hack basically told you to get measure basically the measure the space where the ram usually goes and kind of cut a card made a library card a credit card that you don't use anymore and basically cut that and put that underneath it which helps to raise it a little bit so it connects because what would happen with my computer beforehand is that i would use it and if you shook the table or you picked up and put in your bag it'd go like all fuzzy and the screen would have all these little squares and blotches and stuff which obviously meant um something was wrong with the ram and when you try to turn it on again you get those three beeps of hell dude 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 so you knew okay i'm in trouble so i had to change that i need to actually talking about change i need to change this microphone foam thing it's yucky Ugh. anyway let's continue it looks i just looking at the screen now it's got some little light but anyway let's just continue so i changed the uh, i changed that ram edited it everything went well um and then yeah i did it a couple of times it didn't work and i kind of took it slow because i had the entire weekend to kind of relax and kind of do it you know just you know chill, in a chill manner and then as as time progressed and i started to actually think about it i started to actually be soft and do stuff with care i've got all the necessary screws and whatnot put it back together and then boom it started working so i'm basically gonna be running my entire podcast on this now it's got at the moment it's now got one terabyte of hard drive solid state hard drive it's got eight gigabytes of ram probably gonna update it again to 16 now the ram's working before i was like oh, i wasted money on ram now the ram's working i'll probably ump it again to 16 because it's got you know such hard hard drive i want to make sure it's packed in going to have OBS running on this, GarageBand, Photoshop, Record Box, and that's it. And then the other thing, the Legion, um, the Len sorry, the Lenovo Legion 5 will be purely for streaming. Um, I might maybe switch it in the end to just have that to stream and to record, but I like, quite like the recording on the Mac. I'm not going to lie. It's quite nice to record on here. So, um, yeah, that's basically what I did in the weekend. And then what else? Watch football. United v. Liverpool, obviously. Sorry, United v. Villa, Liverpool. Um, we played away, um, and it was as we expected. Um, Aston Villa basically gave us a good hiding. So that was a bit embarrassing. Not hiding, but, yeah, let's say hiding performance. Even though it was a draw, I say performance-wise, Aston Villa would definitely come out of that game feeling like they 
drop two points as opposed to gain two, even though they came from behind because there was only one team that was going to win that game. So that was a bit frustrating to watch. But again, because I had this little project going on, I could kind of distract myself a little bit. But man, stuff going on United at the moment. It's super frustrating, man. Really, is frustrating. But we're gonna get into that later. We'll get into that later. But, um, but yeah, that's been it for the most part. I'm still doing seventy five hard. Still working out a little bunch. I'll go and go gym again today. If you're listening to this on Monday, I'll, I'll be in the gym probably by the time you're listening to this. Still training as much as I can. Obviously, gonna ramp it up to two times this time this week. Um, obviously sticking to the you know the intermittent fasting thing's been going pretty well. Reading the books have been going pretty well. It's all going nice. I'm not going to lie. The start of the year has been pretty decent. Um, start of the year has been pretty decent. Um, it, it kind of is nice because for the most part, it feels like everyone else is sort of staying indoors. Even though I haven't spoken to many people, I feel like most people are kind of taking it easy. Um, and like I mentioned before, on other shows, I think in general, I think um, what's I gonna say? Uh, I think in general, COVID has kind of killed outdoors anyway. So people have basically learned how to operate and to stay, I won't say stay indoors, but people have learned how to enjoy their own company in, in, indoors or maybe with a couple of friends. So it, you don't really, I don't know, maybe for me, I don't really get FOMO anymore because I used to get FOMO bad, so especially around the weekends. I'd always, especially for me, because I don't have many friends anyway. So if I see a group of people hanging out doing stuff, I'd be like, oh man, I wish I could be doing that. Da, 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 da. But then of course I'll make no effort to make friends. So, you know, I can't complain, but still I'd get a lot of fun for just seeing people having fun. But the fact that not many people are really out doing things, if they are, they're just going around locally. So it's not anything crazy. It kind of makes being at home a little bit easier and a little bit more bearable. And I just think in general, we have kind of changed as humans. I know I have my kind of, um, uh, my kind of, um, what's that thing called? Not travel loss. What's it think? not travel as it's a phrase people used to say but yeah my wanderlust for traveling has kind of dimmed somewhat um i still love to go obviously a couple of times a year to go burger and stuff that's always nice maybe go to somewhere sunny for the summer and that's about it really right i always have my little trips that you know i do in terms of like that sort of stuff but when it comes to like wanting to always escape and go somewhere that sort of stuff is kind of dimmed maybe it's because you get older you start to realize that you know you can have fun wherever you are at you know i could i could be in a phone box somewhere and i could have an absolute blast um you, you start to get you know the more you go out the more you start to realize most things are the same and most of the time the reason why you do have a lot of good fun is because of the company you keep and less about where you go right usually it's most of the time um you can be in a shitty hostel somewhere and if you have a good room of people or you bump into the right people in a flipping um, dining hall somewhere you're gonna have a great time if you bump into the wrong people you're gonna have the wrong the, the horrible time so i can i can obviously attest to that having the experience i had in berlin so yeah that's been about it really and um what else has been going on that's about it really yeah that's about it so we're gonna crack into the show really get started so if you got yourself a drink or a little snack grab it and let's just dive on deep so first and first to dive on deep before we get into anything else we got some really unfortunate news this is courtesy of resident advisor um new york's bossa nova civic club closed for the notable amount of time after a catastrophic building fire um it just keeps getting from bad to worse for this club if i'm not mistaken this is again a club in new york that i'm only familiar with because of the stuff they've done with um Disc Woman, I know that Frankie from Disc Woman talks about Boston over a lot, and I kind of kept my eye on it. And then I started to follow this account on Instagram, I think, which is called like the line at Boston over or something like that. I think it's something like that, or the queue or the line at Boston over, which is basically some guy or girl that basically jumps down and goes around and records people in the queue there because I guess it's a pretty popular club in that area and there's always a massive queue outdoors so kind of a little bit of an update sort of similar to like the Berghain line queue um Instagram account that people use to where they upload Instagram stories basically updating you on how long the queue is so you can basically judge when you want to go and when you want to arrive blah 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 so that's how I know the club and um if I'm not mistaken sometime in the beginning of the pandemic may have been when that weird weird i think was it a was it a rain torrential rain or was it a flooding i don't know what it was but do you remember during there was a time in new york when people were showing these sharing these videos and pictures of people trying to get to work and the whole flipping subway was flooded and you know there was like people doing door dash and riding their, their bicycles through like you know four foot high pieces of rain and shit just crazy 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 shit so i think that was happening and i think they had a lot of damage at boss all over during that flooding if i'm not mistaken and now on top of that fire like oh jesus man 
especially during the pandemic too when i'd imagine most places in the world are suffering in terms of getting people in when it comes to especially clubs because you know governments are basically giving clubs a little bit of a black mark in terms of the pandemic because people feel that they're going to catch the virus over there and it's dangerous and all this sort of stuff it's just a, it just must be an unfortunate place so um the subtext says friends are raising funds for the venue after the building sustained extensive water damage so fire and water damage i'm not too sure let's see um so uh two so it says um key brooklyn venue boston over civic club has announced it will close indefinitely following a fire on the building's first floor according to the personal safety network app citizen the fire was reported at 9 p.m local time on january 12th while the blaze didn't reach the ground floor which boss houses boston over the building still enjoyed extensive water damage in other parts of the building one tenant sustained secondary burn injuries to the hand another man's that dog died oh man that is so tragic man the instagram post the club said it's safe to say we will be closed for a noble amount of time the other quote says we'll update you soon thank you so much for nine years of support and friendship they're already kind of preempting the the close of it oh god friends of us never organize a go find me page with a goal of raising three hundred thousand to help the venue get back on its feet it says here, yeah, as a quote, uh, I forget this from the Instagram story, but I know it says, as you may have heard, there was very serious uh, fire on the third floor of the apartment of our building. A tenant was seriously injured and sadly another tenant's dog died. A dog did not survive. The building sustained significant damage and it's safe to say we'll be closed for a notable amount of time. We will update you soon. Thank you so much for any support and friendship. Another thing, it says, the 1,900 square foot club opened in late 2012 at a time when DIY venues were so ubiquitous and illegal parties were a primary area for underground talents. Bossa was almost into revered by one of new york's few legal few legal venues purveying an elicatic sound countless local djs such as mo moretti and ace um, and ace mo as well as the techno feminist collective desk women have built their careers throughout the intimate club sorry through the intimate club numerous artists mourned the incident on twitter but yeah this is frankie obviously head of disc woman saying the following i just got off the phone from john in regards to boss and he told me the fire was above bossa bossa didn't burn but the water damage and the damage of the whole building means it won't be open for a long time may not open at all but still figuring this out again tragic if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure they had a they that they it suffered some flooding and now on top of that they suffered flooding again off the back of a fire or maybe it's the same thing but i think it's different i'm pretty sure it's different but let's carry on and was the other building fire in brooklyn too the one that killed all those people i think five people died in something like r.i.p man like crazy isn't it crime is going up up in la i think yeah because of i don't know what's going on there i guess because of just people are in the hard times and hard times get people to start robbing and stealing and then of course in new york they're just going through what they're going through there obviously with the fires and stuff it's just terrible man it says yeah another post says i love boss i love her so much and hearing that building is caught in the fires breaking my heart i hope everyone's okay another person says space is so tenuous really hoping boss will reopen soon but also a reminder of how difficult it is for underground music scenes to find the stability and put down any kind of long-term special roots so i guess similar to london or no the uk or london mostly is a it's a it's a you just get priced out of it there's good spaces here but just the amount you'd have to pay to find a good space to kid it out and obviously to make sure that it doesn't get closed because the flipping neighbors complaining because if there's one thing about british people especially british people i don't like that's the thing i've realized about uk maybe it's the same in new york i'm not too sure if you're off in new york let me know it feels like in the uk there's a clear divide between people who like to go out like nightlife people and people that don't like to go out and there's no understanding of either side's argument so if you're in the area if you make it if you open a club in an area where most people don't like to don't like nightlife people or don't like nightlife scene or anything associated with it they're going to make it their aim to make sure your club closes but then on the other side if you are a purveyor of nightlife you're going to make sure that you make the people around you life a living hell and you know you're going to live your life and not going to dim your star whatsoever which obviously leads to those weird impasses and most of the time councils decide to always kind of lean towards the tenants so people actually live there day to day um as opposed to the people who are actually bringing in money to the area which is ironic but you know we move it continues to this person says Bossa really has offered something for everyone in new york city techno i had wild nights there when i was younger i played one of my first ny dj sets there at exile i found solace in the chill weeknights where i would go to dance anytime i wanted to go as i got older yeah that's something people don't understand like clubs like this they serve as a kind of local meeting point they sort of serve like as an adult or like an somewhat adult youth club if that makes sense because those were big here in london too and again i don't know who, what government came in in place who just took those away but there's no denying there's some sort of link especially in london between the fall of the youth centers and then the flipping uprising and peak of flipping knife crime and all that stuff and you know the, the 
the the kind of um the what you call it the the popularity of people getting into gangs or whatnot definitely has something to do with it because most of my time spending when I was growing up was either spent playing football going to some sort of summer school camp thing where you just got to basically fuck around with people that your your age and obviously going to youth centers which again you get to fuck around with people your age. Another person says heartbreaking news about Boston over last night, keeping everyone's affected in my mind. And of course, there's a there's a GoFundMe there too that they're trying to raise 300 grand for. They're already up close to 100,000. They're at 94,000 uh, dollars there. So if you can spare a couple of shekels, then definitely make sure you check it out. I'll put the link to the GoFundMe for Boston Over's restoration staff and tenant fund in the description of the show. So definitely check it out if you're that way inclined. Um, the, 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 so yeah, we're raising the funds to support the staff and bar and tenants so this is from somebody that's not even a touch associated with Boston Over they're just doing it to support them which is flipping awesome sorry um Continue to say, distribution of the funds will be broken down as we approach the goal. The space is a second home for a lot of us and has cultivated many careers, friendships and chosen families. Bossa has endured but survived an extreme amount of adversity during the pandemic, no less. This level of harm needs to fall back into the community. And this is what the community is actually about. When people talk about techno community or dance community, electro scene community, this is what community actually means. If you actually are somebody that's prominent, that's been able to sustain your career throughout the entire pandemic, especially if you're somebody from the fucking business techno scene and you've been able to, you know, thrive and survive during this time and you actually played there a couple of times, this is where you maybe should throw them a couple of shekels. You know I mean, no one's, no one's telling you how much you should throw them or when you should do it, but this is something you should definitely consider in terms of giving back and actually supporting the quote unquote community because people that are still sort of like, you know, trying to um, resurrect their careers or get themselves back on their feet, they need this space. And especially the people that work there because that's something that always kind of breaks my heart when i think of you know i think about how dead it is here in london not dead but the vibe is definitely gone or the vibe is off here in london and then i think of the people who actually work in this industry when it comes to hospitality and nightlife who basically you know support themselves through tips and you know just you know getting as many gigs as they can or working double shifts and stuff and now these weekends are completely dead like there are no double shifts um the all night of the all night parties have done i've not really heard many people talking about warehouse graves anymore like it's a completely different vibe and i just feel so sad you know what i mean for those people because it feels like that's never going to come back or if it is going to come back it's going to come back when people are legitimately not afraid to go outdoors anymore because unfortunately like i said before governments the world over have basically made clubs and any place that you you kind of congregate in a big group of people they've made that the enemy of flipping you know civility they've made it the enemy of flipping progress because essentially if you go to those kind of places you're basically telling yourself that you might get covid and all that stuff blah 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 blah. but yeah um support bus on over civic club um again the place that i've always went to visit haven't got a chance to unfortunately you know the last time i went to new york was in like what 2010 or something way before it opened at that time i didn't even know there was a techno scene that big or that could support a club of that ilk there anymore to be honest i think at the time i went i was mostly going to i think i might have went to that like afro punk i think i might have went to some hardcore shows and i think that might be it and i think i might have went to like um what's that place called um oh that place is like three or five floors and they have loads of music for it's cool i think i don't think it's open anymore but it's like a legendary new york place where you'd go and it had like five floors it'd be like they'd be like um you know they'd be like um i don't know they'd be like uh what's that word called they'd be like reggaeton on one floor hip-hop on one contemporary i don't know i forgot the place what it was called but it's a really famous venue a lot of people perform at too i went there once but yeah like the comp the scene over there especially new york is really thriving there's a lot of great record stores a lot of great people that are doing great things and again one of the main spots that they always kind of speak about you hear them mention is bossa nova so if they can if people can rally around and lend their support in some way shape or form that'd be awesome i also just see red bull family donated three grand yeah so let's just keep it up and hopefully that happens and people are able to support and you know and slowly but surely boston never can get back on their feet because it's needed now more than ever man needed now more than ever what else we've got here to talk about let's move on let's talk about yeah let's talk about alex let's move on just to cultural shit like all the other stuff so obviously um at the moment it's uh menswear fashion yeah, men, men's fashion week um at the moment everyone's in milan it doesn't feel like it though again i think it's because the pandemic the vibes are off so it feels like no one's really talking about much of the stuff anymore it's kind of hard to justify talking about you know um five thousand pound bomber jackets when people are legitimately struggling to keep the lights on but again we have to keep moving we have to keep um some semblance of normality and here's my attempt at it and obviously talking about covid all the time is completely boring so let's just move on with this 
So this is a Alex, Alex, Alex or Alex. How is he pronounce it? He pronounce it Alex. I think he pronounce it Alex. But basically, this is a Matthew Williams brand who is now um, head, obviously, at Givenchy. But Alex has basically been the brand that spearheaded his career and basically gave him the opportunity to get that Givenchy job. And it felt like for a brief period, whilst he was still juggling, kind of coming to grips with working for a big luxury fashion house and getting to grips with maybe being, you know, kind of living in two locations at once you know traveling to paris and whatnot or maybe i don't know where is it Givenchy's studios in paris i'm pretty sure they are. i'm not too sure but don't hold me on that but regardless he had to kind of juggle you know carrying two brands and obviously still his namesake um matthew no mw is it mm it's not mw yeah m what is it yeah i think it's mmw the thing he does with nike so he's got three projects happening at the same time and it felt like for a small period of time there was a time when Alex had to kind of the quality of Alex had to dip a bit, and it was you know, understandable because if you get the Givenchy job, you kind of want to put your all into it. You want to put every bit of inspiration and ideas that you have into that kind of big job because as soon as you get it, you could lose it right away. And again, because of some of the stuff I've been seeing on Twitter, people kind of not responding well to the designs, even though I thought a lot of it was really good. And maybe he was the only person so far, you know, post uh, Ricardo Tisch who's been able to kind of revive Givenchy in a kind of notable cultural way. Um, I don't think anybody was talking about Givenchy prior to Matthew. Um, introduction which is basically part of the reason why houses like Givenchy decide to hire people who aren't maybe as traditionally fashion experienced as a Matthew Williams because he's a you know kind of cultural zeitgeist somebody in the ilk of the Virgil Abloh somebody who's kind of not trained kind of trained unconventionally in fashion maybe he didn't go to fashion school but spending enough time being around people dressing them you know being part of different scenes being part of collectives all this sort of stuff working with Kanye uh, it kind of added to his overall arsenal and now when he kind of presents Alex it's maybe not as refined as something that you would get from a let's say a conventional fashion design like a JW Hansen but there's still some ideas there and some kind of thought that could kind of I think elevate it to a level that's good enough to basically attract a new customer base and then once he gets his feet under the table all that kind of fine tuning of the fashion with a capital F can happen as he's kind of builds his relationships with all the ateliers and people working there and seamstress and whatnot and pattern cars I think over time so it's no coincidence now that I feel like this might have been Alex's or Alex's strongest collection maybe as opposed to the the first one because I thought the first one was amazing in terms of how hard and fast he came in like just showing okay this is what I'm about but I think in terms of confidence which is what i think this has given me um the alix um for 2022 sorry the, the, the alix 422 menswear collection i thought this is his most confident and it's no surprise also again working you know with Givenchy doing that in tandem it probably gave him a lot of confidence he probably feels like his ideas are somewhat validated because you get the little because as much as i hate all of the kind of um as much as i hate people that lick people from fashion's asses and you know the sucking up and stuff there's still something that has to be said for feeling quite honored and proud that somebody that was able, that was kind of got their start from print screening t-shirts can have the ability to design for a place like Givenchy, right? Where they can maybe say, hey, we trust you with our house. We trust you with our codes. We trust you with our archive to basically revive us and give us a chance to basically communicate with this new generation of customers or whatnot, right? Um, or basically tap into whatever's going on now in the cultural zeitgeist. And I think there is something to be said for that, to be feeling proud of it. I'm like, cool, look, I started from just, you know, popping letters on a hat or cutting up jeans. And now suddenly here I am making this stuff. I mean, it must be amazing. So again, no coincidence that it's kind of seeped back in. Because again, like I said, when he got the Givenchy job, I thought Alex quality kind of dipped. And now it's kind of coming back up again, which is similar what happened with um, Demna too, when he was when he kind of went from Balenciaga. So when he went from Vetemon to Balenciaga and you stood doing Vetemon, then obviously he quit doing Vetemon, but for a while he was doing it or for maybe not one maybe a couple of seasons and the quality of it man wasn't that great either because he was obviously pouring his heart into Balenciaga which makes sense when you get that kind of job you have to do it but I thought this was made definitely one of Matthew Williams most confident collections that he's done for Alix so far let's quickly check over the pictures and then we can read the review um, again here just great stuff as an opening look the colors are amazing so are the shapes loads of cool inspirations and looks I love this kind of funnel neck thing that he has going on this styling tip on most of the jackets i'm not sure if it's a hood or if it's a scarf or if it's something that gets attached but you know matthew's into a lot of modular sort of things that you can kind of take apart and put onto other things similar to what like samuel ross does. i think there's some surprise there's not been a collaboration so far between samuel ross of a cold war and matthew williams of alix i think those brands would 
do great together um they kind of have a similar sort of aesthetic to me there's a lot of thought that goes into everything they do from the zippers to the way the armholes are like everything kind of there's a lot of thought and again i think over time both of them would i think sam ross is a good example once he got the money and he got the better maybe access to i won't say tools or whatever it may be right the level of his presentation upped as well but you could still see um, an ember of that in the first collections that they'd done when they were spray painting air force ones and dip dyeing shit i think you could definitely see it from there too but i think i really really like this i'm not going to lie i think this is really strong alex full 2022 um the only disappointing thing some of the men's looks for the most part are all black i would like to see a lot more color maybe including some of the men's looks but i'm sure most of this stuff will be made when it's produced in iterations of different colors but it would have been nice to see different stuff lined up and you know so you could see what it looks like in terms of the black stuff but shoes like this i think we've seen matthew wearing these on his instagram page these new shoes they're basically it looks like his interpretation of the balenciaga no, of the bottega veneta puddle boot but instead of doing what um ambush did from yoon yoon from ambush sorry um she did those dog awful flipping copycats of the bottega veneta puddle boots that weren't really you know they, they weren't even her own version she just basically added a sock liner to it it's a bit embarrassing but at least with these these are actually look completely different they're semi sort of inspiration in terms of being what's it um somewhere 3d molded right in that respect but they just look different they look a little bit more substantial they've definitely got um the hint of what alex, um, alex and matthew williams is about um in terms of them being i don't know what you say technologically involved so sort of like sci-fi looking they kind of remind me of the boots that they wear in the expanse on amazon which you definitely should check out if you're a fan of sci-fi but 100 percent, i love all of it um again when, when the addition of color it always looks great the shorts over the trousers or the shorts attached to the trousers I'm not too sure really really good stuff i think someone mentioned that this look is inspired by an archive piece from uh, maison margella again but done with confidence and again maybe a little nod to margella too with these sort of like big toe covering sandals i'm not really a fan of them but actually i can be a fan of them because usually my if, even i've got butter feet and all my toes are horrible my big toe is usually the most um butters one so if i can hide my big toe similar to how people when they when they wear face marks nowadays you basically look more attractive right because you hide maybe this bit that makes you look older and everyone's mostly got decent eyes and nose shape if you kind of cover it up so maybe that's a good little way if you want to cover up some of your ugly um, toe features you get those kind of big toe covers so maybe that's a double on tundra reference my gel on the top my gel on the bottom not too sure in terms of the major tabby boots i mean but yeah look at the layering and some of the funnel neck stuff this is so good that's a great look again i think it's a scarf right maybe it's a scarf or maybe it's a detachable thing i'm not too sure but everything about it is great and again you're always going to get great outwear pieces from matthew williams when it comes to alix he never misses when it comes to that stuff from these collaborations with Montclair to the stuff he does in line it's always great and again another collaboration that i'm surprised he ain't done yet maybe it's because he collaborated with Montclair, but i think alix would be great to do a collaboration with stone island or cp company that would be flipping awesome imagine what that jacket would look like like sorry there'd be a lot of tech involved in there too like this this is just awesome this is the kind of wear that you this is the kind of outfit that you'd wear to go rob someone's house and then go to the club later do you know what i mean <laughs> stop it with black air force ones on the feet this looks so hard man so 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 good like come on man this is this is a man with confidence this is a man who's got you know he's feeling himself you know newly divorced doing push-ups in his little paris apartment you know his, his phone his dms are probably crazy you know what i mean just imagine it right um yeah and he's one of the rare fashion designers especially male ones who kind of has who kind of gets the uh for, from what i've seen on twitter he seems to get a lot of first in from the male and the female fans out there so he's definitely living his good life out there but yeah this is fucking great man really really good seamless zips there too like awesome all of it is awesome and definitely 100 percent one of the most confident collections i've seen him do again this is so good man this is so so good maybe again maybe it's the demna influence too you know demna's operating on such a high frequency now at the moment and you know he's friends i guess with everybody or similar sort of age and he obviously pulls a lot of reference from the kind of street quote unquote world you would say and maybe some people are like you know what let's flex our muscles he's basically validating everyone's taste in streetwear by presenting it on a luxury level right because he got padded flannels he's selling hoodies for 600 pounds t-shirts for 400 essentially he's kind of legitimizing everybody's taste levels in streetwear so if you're doing something great in streetwear you can basically feel a bit more confident and pop your shit because you know guys like that are also pulling information for 
pulling inspiration for the stuff that you do but look at that look at that as a look look at this jesus christ whoever's doing the styling too again bravo to you whoever you are you are absolutely smashing it and the fact that they make all their menswear shows include a bit of women in it too helps to kind of give the show a little bit of extra edge the women's stuff looks way more tailored and better form fitting than it did prior even though i'm pretty sure am i not mistaken to say that alix started off as a women's brand first then it did the men's out after i'm pretty sure it did so maybe this is a bad statement to say but yeah it just looks all great man like look at that that is a bad boy outfit i'm not sure if that's a hood or if that's a thing but that just looks so good those boots are going to be so popular i'm definitely going to attempt to purchase them they look so great you know the kind of boots that look good with all pants like oh god almighty substantial to the max look at that that is a fantastic look man nah those those one toe shoe um heel things are pretty decent let's not lie i kind of take it back even if you've got an ugly other toe you, you definitely need to wear them they look so good but yeah alix 4 20 like, like that's that's a brilliant look the, that's phoebe file already isn't it that's an easy phoebe file already outfit he did really well man big up matthew williams again smashing it as per usual so credit to that man i think that's a uh, lancy foe yeah awesome and then we quickly read over the yeah again one of the best dress designers out yeah looks a fucking amazing boom bang bang definitely been intermittent fasting and do a couple of sit-ups and kettlebell swings um and then quickly read over the review i thought this bit was quite nice here it says yeah above us um this is for the review for the alix Four Twenty Twenty show it says above us drone wind and twisted and whoa this motor's producing enough uh, upper to blow stands of the ostrich feather collars worn okay they're collars worn by the models to adhere to lips um at our feet another drone this one on wheels clinked and clanked as the forward and reversed to ensure the shots were allowed for lingering glances at the split toe contra color women's wear heels all three really nice and a mono boot and a blunky contoured eva foam puddle boot that was updated with a similar piece and first launch a few seasons back really i didn't i don't remember seeing that the models walked in a slow burning snare rattled beat by filthy who had put on an original composition together after receiving images of the show and venue and this the decadently uh, decorated but near derelict church on the edge of town in a town named saint victor and 40 martyrs so an original score by filthy madness in it let's quickly play this and see what it sounds like lower this sound a little bit i want to hear what this sounds like actually i'm not gonna lie oh that sounds good in it yeah that sounds good that sounds good not going to let's continue quickly the collection was consistent with those uh past partisan so parisian promenades in the striking contrast between the masculine and the feminine silhouettes those in the menswear including a musician destroy lonely were layered um stature with shipping and puffer over technical mid layers of voluminous knits and pvc pants pvc pants i didn't see them oh those pvc okay cool um sometimes alongside short over pant layering um placed against long top coats and bulky bolstered shoulders all making for an ex ex exaggeratingly weighty and visual protective carapage and i think there's a quote here somewhere where i liked about him it says here thinking of the long gap between alex's last show and this one we wondered if williams had proceeded um sorry had processed any input from clients about their evolving taste and he says i wish i had more time to spend with the clientele and understand them a little bit better but i honestly just make clothes that i feel that are desirable so maybe it sounds a bit sh selfish or narcissistic but i'm just making things that i like and hopefully other people will like them too that's just how i move it's interesting that he said that about narcissism because you've got obviously um playboy car he's tall what's called narcissist who he's meant to be his twin and somebody who he rates highly and they're meant to have a close relationship um do you remember that video of uh, matthew talking about how the album whole lot already is a classic and we all kind of doubted him and the album comes out we all panic myself myself included and then a couple months later we're all saying it's the best thing since sliced bread so he's saying narcissist playboy car is saying narcissist recently the um kanye west feature the kanye west track feature in the game called easy 
also has a line where he says he's a narcissist. So it's a f common theme going around these guys at the moment. But I do like this kind of phraseology. And it's something that you only get from people from streetwear. And I think that's a kind of um, an outlook and a kind of ethos when it comes to making clothes. I think has essentially taken over this industry and has put these guys at the top, top of the game. Um, it says here, it's here, it says, um, but I honestly just make clothes that I feel are desirable right just making clothes for yourself maybe you've got an idea of who your client is in your head or you're designing for basically another version of yourself but you're not basically going and to and fro from the trends that happen in, in the industry and what's hot and what's not no you just kind of got a singular code or a singular kind of idea and theme and over time you just kind of iterate it differently similar to what Rick Owens does right um it's essentially the same collection fine-tuned again and again and again and again and again obviously different inspirations you know there to pull different things or many different shapes or whatnot but in terms of overall what you present is sort of the same thing yes again and again so i love all that stuff um to say yes so maybe it sounds selfish or narcissistic but I just that i just like making things that i like and hopefully other people will like them too that's just how i move so yeah big up matthew williams definitely his strongest collection for alix so far i'm a big fan of it um can't wait to see those boots in the store definitely gonna attempt to purchase them myself probably won't get them successfully but you know you never know until you try. You never know until you try. Moving on from that. Obviously, United lost to... Um, no, United lost. See, it, it feels like I lost. United drew 2-2 to Villa the other day. A pretty um, interesting game in terms of United fan. Because for the most part, it's been a real struggle to see any improvement in this team. We've got many leaks coming out about the squad in terms of the unha unhappiness in the group in terms of the lack of professionalism in terms of the prima donnas demoning the attitudes all that nasty stuff coming out there and then of course fans were just basically split in terms of what we want i think there are some united fans who quite clearly want us to finish the top four because they can't you know be bothered to watching us in the europa league or they think a club like united's level can only be in the champions league if we're not in the champions league we might as well finish 10th but unfortunately for the scale of the club that we are and for the amount of investment that's been put into the the squad in terms of the additions of a Varane, of a Sancho, of a Ronaldo, they just can't justify having us finish outside the top four. So we're going to have to finish the top four by hook and crook. But unfortunately this season, much like maybe previous seasons, or no, this season maybe is a unique one in that, you know, the, the top three teams in Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea are leaps and bounds better than the teams below them. And then the teams below them, especially the ones fighting for that top four spot, are basically much of a muchness. And if you're honest, as United fan, the only reason why we're even close to even trying to squeeze into the top four is because we have really good players in attack. Talented players who can win games on their own, right? With one kick, sorry, with, with one shot, with one bit of skill, they can completely change the flow of the game. So that kind of allows us the ability to um, pull ourselves out of shit situations. But unfortunately, our luck as United fans has kind of finally run out because it looks like all of the luck we had with Solskjaer in terms of getting penalties, in terms of getting, you know, the desirable free kicks or whatever it may be, or goals for the opposition side being ruled off for offside or whatnot, that's not happening anymore. And now we're basically having to compete with teams who might have less resources than us, but have players who are far more hungry, players who maybe fit the mold of the manager better, who basically understand the assignment, who basically want to work hard for their teammates and they're ready to put in a graft. And, these players, especially Aston Villa, they put in a hell of a graft, especially after going two goals down. You would have thought their heads would have dropped, but immediately they responded pretty quickly. And towards the end of it, you felt like there was only going to be one winner in this game, and it's definitely Aston Villa. So that was obviously the disappointing to see. The midfield was... <sighs> The midfield selection was just so bizarre. It doesn't even bother explaining. I thought in the beginning of the first half, I thought we did pretty well. I thought um, we pressed them really well. I thought it was a, it was probably the best illustration of what Ragnik wants to play in terms of his level of football. In terms of us on the ball, we weren't great, but I think off the ball was far better press from everyone in the team, which again led to us getting that early goal. Um, which obviously came from a mistake, but I think in general, the momentum and the kind of pressure we were putting on them maybe kind of... Um, kind of you know through Martinez for a loop the goalkeeper of Aston Villa I'm not too sure but I thought that was much better but in the second half the fitness levels dropped players like Matt Tich, who's obviously a little bit older was suffering he probably needed to get taken off or there needed to be an extra body put in midfield alongside him to help him out that didn't happen from Ralph Ragnick which I guess is again something I'll talk about later in terms of his um him being on fraud watch for me personally and in eventually even though we didn't have scoring that second goal 
against a runner play I would say it still felt like Villa if they get one especially if they got one before the 80th minute they're definitely going to be able to get a second and quite soon after they were able to get one um, Coutinho comes on and he's basically able to in a way give an assist <laughs> and also score a goal which is freaky but yeah um a pretty dog shit performance for us. but the big story to come out of this has definitely been the story surrounding Anthony Martial most United fans know that Anthony Martial wants to leave the club unfortunately one of our better players I think one of our more talented players it would be nice to keep our actual players who can play football at, at our club but unfortunately most of the United fan base especially the top players are basically falling out of love with Martial because he doesn't run he doesn't press people enough he doesn't he doesn't look bothered on the pitch quote unquote or doesn't smile uh, or maybe because he's French who knows but there's a big part of the fan base that basically wants that guy out and i don't think it's fair because the performances we've seen so far from cavani don't really justify him staying ahead of Martial. if you think about it especially against villa he was pretty anonymous didn't really offer much up front um so whatever anyway we continue so he wants to leave most big clubs if a player wants to leave of that ilk especially somebody who can still you know command a good resale price you'll just try your best to get them out so you can kind of um, take them off the wage bill and maybe get somebody else in cheaper or somebody that just fits what you want to do but or just wants to be here that's what most big clubs do but it mean i don't do that we're dragging our feet Marshall's made his intention known many many months ago he's still at the club he's obviously not playing anymore because he wants to leave which i never understood also i think i understand if it's a player who don't you're not really playing but if it's a player who's pretty decent and contribute itself to the team you're better off including him so he can help the team while he's here and if a bid comes in because he's performing then yeah let him go but you know and again if a bid comes in it's probably going to be higher because he's performing you can basically you know you can basically ask for a higher fee but we don't do that we obviously do stuff backwards so now he's been out of the team he's been kind of iced out and after the game at Villa one journalist decided to ask Ralph Ragnick the question because he's been really honest and upfront why isn't Martial playing and this was Ralph Ragnick's response to the question I'll play a video here so you can hear it hi Ralph um one keepers um was there a particular reason for that i know obviously you've had hi ralph um one fewer substitute than aston villa on the bench and two goalkeepers um was there a particular reason for that i know obviously you've had injuries in the team for example anthony marshall um is it a case of him wanting a transfer out so he's not in the squad or is it an injury um just if you could elaborate please Yes, uh, he didn't want to be in the squad. Uh, he would have been in the squad uh, normally, but he didn't want to. Uh, and that's the reason why he was not travelling with us yesterday. So he clearly said that Marshall didn't want to be in the squad and that's why he didn't travel. And he instantly absolutely erupted. You got all those fucking walads like, you know, Stephen House and all that top red crew, you know, screaming bloody profanities at Marshall, get him out of the club. Yeah, basically, I would say trying to attribute all the sort of dressing room unrest to basically players like him wanting to leave which i don't agree with i think players can want to leave if they want united isn't some sacred hallowed place especially to a player maybe it is to us but these players are basically doing a job they're playing the sport that they love but essentially most of them aren't in love with the club like that as as we are fans and obviously the way we're going as a club there's no denying that for us to compete against Man City, Liverpool's and the Chelsea's in the league, it's going to take time. We're probably not close to winning another title for another, what, five years? A European Cup, maybe a bit longer than that. So if a player of Martial's ilk who maybe thinks he can win trophies and maybe he's thought like his time has been somewhat wasted at United the last few years or maybe he feels like he hasn't got the right rubber the green or maybe he just doesn't want to play for the cup and just wants to move somewhere else and take his children or raise his children in another country he's free to do so but for whatever reason some fans you know have sticks in the mud about certain people the whole incident exploded everyone kind of you know telling Marshall to go myself included I wasn't really angry or uh, you know aggressive about it I just was saying you know if a guy was if a guy said that point where he's currently you know trying to basically go and strike it might be best for just to get him out of the club so you send a message to the rest of the squad and also you free up the wage bill but then another development happens where Marshall posts a screenshot message so he did most post messages on an Instagram story basically refuting the claims that he decided not to go and travel with the squad. And he says as follows, I will never refuse to play a match for Man United. I've been here for seven years and I've never disrespected and will never disrespect the club and the fans, which is definitely true. And I think some people say, no, you disrespect the club because you don't run or you don't smile, which is nonsense. But in terms of him kicking up a fuss and being a bad influence in the dressing room, he hasn't been that. You know, he his number nine shirt got taken away from him when Ibrahimovic signed for the club, I think. Remember that? That was a big deal 
Well, Mourinho kind of took his number nine away from him. Then he got it back again when Mourinho left. But he's been through a little, a little bit of a hard time at United, especially considering, you know, he's been playing for some fairly abject managers. And um, now to kind of have that kind of smudge on his name where people are accusing him of being a guy who doesn't want to travel the squad, being a guy who's willing to kind of pick up 250k or however much he's earning per week and not play. It obviously is not going to you know, look good on you. And obviously now, um, off the back of that, the embarrassment, we've now got pictures of Marshall spotted at training, arriving so clearly he's being reintegrated back to the squad again, so most likely we'll see him playing for the team again. But it just makes us, it just makes it clear that this club is an absolute mess. We are a mess. I don't know who's lying, who's saying the truth. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. Most likely, the two scenarios I can see is that maybe Ralph Ragnick heard through Marshall's intermediaries that he didn't want to travel the squad, not Marshall directly, and then he decided, okay, cool, and then went and moved on. Or I think it was more so a case of Ralph Ragnick telling Marshall, you're not going to be in the matchday squad, but you can come and travel with the team. So you'd be part of the team that sits basically behind the dugout or sits somewhere else, wherever they designate the area, but you won't be part of the kind of, you won't come on basically. And he probably said, what's the point? I mean, if I'm not going to come on, like, why am I going to go travel? And maybe that's what happened. And then he said, and then, you know, when you ask him a question direct like that, he's going to answer direct and say, yeah, he didn't want to travel, which is technically true, but not technically, not really true. So one of two, one of those scenarios I think is right. Or there's always a wild card that, you know, Ralph Ragnick is just lying and he's just trying to basically force Marsha out of the club by categorically saying a lie, which is demonstrably not true. Then when Marshall reacts, it basically puts Marshall in a position where he now has to kind of accept whatever terms given to him by another club to get out because clearly the manager is trying to sabotage him. But either way, an, a mess of a club, you know, we've even managed to contaminate Ralph Ragnick, who seemed like a bit of a stand-up dude. We can, we've made him even be, uh, we've made him to kind of sound like a bit of a prick. And um, yeah, things are going to get worse before they get better for United, unfortunately. Things are going to get worse before they get better. Um what else is talking about let's just move on with this one the, 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 the. yeah this is a weird one isn't it right this is courtesy of mix mag and this is something that i just surprised me this is the headline this is as follows um sexual assault reports in london nightlife reached a six-year high in 2021 which i didn't understand right because six year high in 2021 considering there was one year where we didn't have any clubs opened and the ones that did open were few and far between and there's less people going out so outside so i didn't really understand why that was happening but anyway let's read the article um so it says as follows reports of sexual assault taking place in london's clubs bars and music venues rose where where rose at their highest in six years since 2021 according to a report by a timeout this is despite the the fact that during the first six months of 2021 venues were shut or had to adhere to strict social distancing rules that is mad but also if i come to think of it that does make some sense right because most people because i think when life did kind of come back to some semblance of normality i remember there being some reports out there that you know sexually transmitted diseases were up tenfold too because people were basically hooking up left right center i think you know many of my friends you know and or many of friends of friends and extensions of friends and adjacent people ended up kind of getting pregnant during the lockdown too and having babies and starting families because you know there was no time there was nothing else to do but to be indoors and just completely smash you know smash your missus from from wall to wall so that made complete sense or smash your fella from wall to wall regardless of what you're gonna do but in clubs, I always felt like when I went to the clubs, it did feel like to me that there was a far less of a horny atmosphere in clubs, especially after things settled down. I think in the beginning, the first few months, people were really active. It felt like people. It felt like when I when I went to E one that time, it felt like everywhere I turned, there was somebody snogging. Right, everyone was snogging around the corners and holding each other's heads and shit. You know that kind of deep snog. So clearly, people were thirsting for human contact. But then recently especially towards the end of 2021, I felt like people kind of had simmered down and kind of got into the flow of going now and, you know, weren't that pressed about seeing people and shit and, you know, just were ready to vibe and just kind of enjoy themselves. And I felt like there was a lot more of a community aspect to things going on, um, especially with the prevalence of all these kind of alternative events, I'd say, right? Like the Infernos and the crossbreeds kind of, you know, um, gaining prominence during the lockdown. It felt like a lot of people were basically finding their tribes, sticking to them and having great nights out. So this is kind of mad to hear. Here, to be honest i'm really it really is a a bit of a mind f 
It says here, according to the information obtained by Time Out from Metropolitan Police, there were 207 allegations of sexual assault and 29 reports of rape in London nightlife establishment between January 1st and October 31st of last year. Since 2016, the number of rape and sexual allegations in London venues has climbed at nearly a fifth. It's unclear if it's related to the increase of reporting from instances. These figures mirror the increase in the number of rapes across the board. Jesus. Um, the number of rape offences in the year ending 2021 was the highest ever recorded according to the Office of National Statistics, the ONS, with a jump between April and June. I guess some people are outdoors. According to Nick Stripe, the ONS head of crime statistics, so this might be because high profile instances and campaigns inspired victims to come forward. Oh, okay, cool. True. There was that lady that disappeared, right? And unfortunately got found dead. Um, there was another one too. I think it was an Asian girl too that unfortunately passed away. Like, there's a few brutal ones. So that makes sense though, because those were quite weird too, right? We're in a pandemic and there's people going around, you know, abducting women. And we're also in a pandemic and there's people going around, you know, abducting women in broad daylight and raping them. Do you know what I mean? So clearly there was some level of, you know, weirdness going on and around the world or going around in this country where maybe people were just taking advantage of maybe lax people not paying attention more. I don't know. It just seemed a bit weird. It kind of, it just, because like I said, when I go out, it feels like there's less people in clubs. So if that's the case, you would imagine there's people, there's less space or less areas for you to kind of hide if you're a flipping wrong and you can't really get away with that sort of stuff anymore, it feels like. But, you know, if you're wrong and you're definitely going to just do what you want to do because, you know, you feel as if you're entitled to it and you feel as if you have dominance over people. And unfortunately, the victims have to suffer in this way and it must be so terrible, man. It's told you the Guardian, prior to the pandemic, the number of police recorded sexual offences was well below the number of victims estimated by the crime survey, and with fewer than one in six victims of rape or assault by penetration reporting the crime to the police. According to Bryony Bion, or Bryony B. Bainon, co-founder of the Good Night Out, an initiative to enhance sexual assault reactions in venues through staff training, there is a mixture of raise in reporting and a raise in prevalence. Okay, good to know. This maybe clears it up. She says as follows. We had a pause on nightlife for over a year, so people's thresholds of what they're willing to put up with may have shifted. Good point. Venues have been put under pressure um, to make sure that COVID stuff is in place, so they could be cooperating more to actually report things. Okay, that's that might make a lot more sense. And people are a lot more sensitive to people's bad experiences. You, know, you can't just brush stuff onto the table. Um, again, maybe people threshold in terms of what they're willing to accept maybe a bit higher because they've not had any contact or anything. So maybe freaks and wrongs can get away with basically taking advantage of people's personal space. And yeah, and again, just high profile cases and maybe somebody to be like, you know what, I'm gonna say something too. But mad in it mad 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 stuff and it's again it's, un it's unfortunate but i think the only kind of silver lining to come from this i guess is during this pandemic it does feel like there's been a lot of people starting parties opening clubs doing festivals that are predominantly geared or directed towards a certain segment of the population and they're kind of making making it kind of abundantly clear that they want to create a safe space for whoever this is for i saw recently news of some festival for queer people that exists somewhere in the uk i'm not sure where it's going to be i think it's one of the first ones and that's a sign of a good thing because it means those people who basically might have went to conventional kind of mainstream festivals who maybe felt uncomfortable are now making come festivals for people who are exactly like them who live the lifestyle that they live so that you can somewhat police the people who come in and hopefully you can do away with some of the wrong ones that enter those kind of places because i always feel like especially when it comes to clubs and all this sort of stuff it feels like a as much as it is obviously a great place to maybe hook up and meet people i just feel like more so it's a great place to kind of hang out and meet people that might end up being your lifelong friends i've met so many on the dance floor that way especially when they happen to be the opposite sex i think it kind of especially if you come into it with the idea of just wanting to meet people and have fun you can have better interactions with people that way because it feels like not everyone because they can immediately tell you're not trying to get into their pants because you've mentioned a whole bunch of mixes that they should listen to and you're chewing your ear off their ear off about this transition or something you know something on those kind of lines and i feel like that's the way that i've always kind of tried to go when i go out to those sort of events it's either me to go out to show off an outfit it's either to go out and dance and really sweat my face off or it's going out and dance and try and see if i can find a new quote-unquote friends i can add on instagram and kind of talk to and you know send them flipping clapping hands emojis when they post something cool on flipping instagram stories i feel like that's a far better way to go about doing things and in general 
maybe because I've got older too, I'm also not afraid or shy enough to kind of step in if I see something weird happening on the dance floor. If I see somebody or if I see a girl especially looking a bit uncomfortable and maybe not wanting to talk to said person, I don't mind stepping in and, you know, making sure everyone's okay or maybe alerting somebody else in terms of what's going on. And I think all of those things are really important, um, especially the smaller the scene is. It's really cool to be able to kind of police and to kind of keep an eye on each other because unfortunately, if you don't do that, when those kind of crimes, build up behind the scenes eventually that kind of sometimes does lead to the downfall of some of these spaces that we all know and love especially when it comes to drugs when people don't police each other when it comes to being responsible and not taking the piss in terms of what you're taking and where you're taking it it leads to basically clubs closing so everyone kind of needs to be on their somewhat best behavior and just basically police each other and obviously make sure if there's any wrong ones they all get kind of booted out and i think for the most part again there's crossbreed there's another really popular sort of sex positive party that do the same they're really strict about what you wear to go in dress code is really strict they kind of are really adamant in the description of the ticketing thing that tickets don't guarantee entry they have a door picker on the, they have a door picker obviously that makes sure people that are coming in are about the right vibe like they kind of go for as much as they can to make sure they vet everyone that goes in so that because again if you're putting a strict um, dress code you're already vetting a whole group of people that are not going to come because they can't be able to get dressed up which is great for you because it means if they can't be able to dress up maybe they can't be able to do other things so that kind of I feel like it's going to get us in a position where slowly but surely um, the prevalence of these sort of instances is going to lower. Of course, in mentoring clubs, you know, there's nothing you could do there because there's just too many random people in those spaces. But for smaller scenes, I feel like it's kind of our prerogative as people that go out to make sure that those places are safe for everyone that goes there, not just for a certain segment of the population. Do you know what I mean? Everyone needs to feel somewhat safe in those places. Even if it is trying to hook up, it's just, it doesn't need to be a place where you're going to rampage and jump from crew to crew trying to hunt for flipping pussy and shit. You just need to relax, take it easy. And most of the time, anyway, I found, even if you are going to try to hook up, the best way to approach things is just to go with no expectations just go and chill go and dance go and enjoy yourself have a drink get fucked up you know what i mean and then maybe something can happen over the course of the night but i feel like in general just being kind of attentive and kind of looking after everybody and kind of viewing everybody more so as your brother and sister less so as like somebody you want to hook up with is the best way to go about things but yeah unfortunate news to see but hopefully things can get better in the future hopefully things can get better in the future move on to this bit of news here this is courtesy of bloomberg it's regarding the boring company that elon musk has founded which i'm a big fan of right i'm a big fan of elon musk and i'm a big fan of the boring company as an idea as a premise right the idea the premise behind it is that elon musk was frustrated with the LA traffic of where he used to live and he basically wanted to ad alleviate that by setting up this company that basically bore tunnels under the earth that would allow um little kind of carts that would have tesla autonomous trucks on them or tesla cars that would basically people around and to kind of main ports or main stations all around different states which are basically cut people's journey so they wouldn't just be like roads forever but there'll be roads that may take you from like one part of la to another part maybe to like downtown to the airport like kind of the main spots that people do so basically alleviate some of the traffic that happens on the main motorways and of course you know for most people from what i heard who live in la they're always complaining about the traffic so it's definitely a big issue so it seemed to make sense and the thinking behind it was that tunnels you could basically build tunnels on top of tunnels right and they can kind of interweave and whatnot and if you of course if you've got autonomous cars that are traveling at high speeds you can basically alleviate any form of traffic because they're of course they're only going to point and you can build them on top of each other so it basically would allow you to make sure you have a network that can basically expand an infinite amount of times more so than cars that are only like on a 2d plane right is it a 2d plane whereas kind of you know when it comes to tunnels they go kind of like that right whatever that means so uh, that was the thinking behind it and I thought it was a good idea so far it's taken a lot of time to kind of get up and running um, I feel like most of the reason why is because F FSD for self-driving isn't where it needs to be now I think the idea that Elon Musk has or the vision sorry of for self-driving is that you're basically popping your destination to a car and it kind of takes you from your house all the way there and then they'll kind of big brain picture of it was that he wanted to turn all teslas into basically robo taxi so that what you could do if you had a tesla you could effectively if you weren't using it on the weekend you could basically turn it into like a taxi where it could basically pick up and drop people without you driving it and earn you money right you could basically lease your car on the side if you wanted to do things like that but it also kind of you know um it also sort of like um, lower the rates of car crashes and whatnot like all this other good stuff is out there it's a big brain stuff big brain stuff so so far it's taken a long time to basically get into action maybe because of elon musk's 
concentration has been split obviously between um, spacex now and obviously mostly tesla stuff so that's basically going there so maybe he's kind of put um the boring copy to one side and i'd imagine the red tape and the bureaucracy he has to go to kind of get things up and running is taking a long time but he's obviously set one up now at the moment in las vegas which is basically been to be the las vegas loop taking people to one point to the other and so far it's been working okay but unfortunately during ces um the electronic the consumer electronics show um, there was a bit of a hiccup where there was videos going viral of basically the, the tunnels basically being backed up with traffic and basically people saying the same thing saying that yeah who would have thought building a tunnel underground would just lead to more traffic so people are basically poo-pooing the idea but i still think there's some nuggets of truth there that are good but i also think it, it goes to show how i think derided or disliked elon musk is from some segment of the population they just seem to not like him i just and i don't get it I, maybe because he's trolly or because of how he talks but i don't understand why somebody who clearly is trying to advance humanity in some way shape or form whilst also advancing his career because there's no denying this guy loves fame i don't think there's a microphone or a camera he hasn't got in front of that he wouldn't want to you know hear his own voice and whatever it may be but still i think the good that he's doing for humanity far outweighs the bad in terms of his trolling and maybe his opinions of certain things i think you could do that you could put that to one side if it goes to kind of you know advancing um advancing life by making us human by making us multi-planetary if it means kind of you know converting us from flipping uh you know petrol and coal and whatnot to electricity and if it obviously means for to alleviate some form of traffic by having these tunnels bored in underground i think that's a great way to go about doing things but that's just me maybe it's because bloomberg says elon musk tunnel system works but the real test is still to come um, it says here the CS Technology Show in Las Vegas last week was an important milestone for Elon Musk's Boring Co., which operates a network of underground tunnels to ferry passengers around the massive convention center in Tesla in cars. The Vegas loop performed mostly well despite hitting some snags that were caught on video and drew mockery on Twitter towards a company that has said its mission is to solve traffic. Another element of Musk's initial vision also appears to be fading. The vehicles rely on human drivers behind the wall. Yes, one thing, a stipulation that's unlikely to change anytime soon. Um, however, Las Vegas officials indicated that they were satisfied with the results last week. Numbers provided to Bloomberg by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority showed that the transit system successfully transported some 15,000 to 17,000 people daily during the CES, almost half the show's attendees. According to Boring Co., the average wait time at the three stations were less than 15 seconds, right? Took, look, took less than two minutes to, on the average and in line of the LVCVA predicted when reporters visited the site in April. The numbers show a solid performance for Boring Co, though CES was hardly the rigorous test for a system some were hoping for. Because the COVID-19 case so dramatically cut down attendance at the conference and shortened the event, many fewer people took tunnels than otherwise would have. It remains to be seen how the system will hold up under radically higher demand. So obviously you got it there. With the tunnel zipping through so far we've not really seen an iteration of the little carts that are meant to kind of ferry people around those are really cool in the kind of presentation they had these little carts that people would kind of get into and it basically zip you around um and also they had these other carts that the cars would go in that would basically zip the cars around quicker and i guess they're autonomous as well but we haven't seen them either it continues to say throughout the durability of the boring code la vegas tunnel system the company's first commercial project is important for a few reasons first the startup is negotiating with several cities around the country all of which are probably eager to see how the startup technology performs in real world second the company's compensation for the las vegas project is tied to how it performs during the conference at ces under terms of its contract boring provided 4.5 million letter of credit to the lvcva the money that boring co owes the authority will be reduced by 300,000 each time the company transports an average of 3,960 passengers per hour for 13 hours of large conference because this year show attendance only attracted 40,000 compared to 170,000 jesus christ that's a big drop in attendance it? that's that's more than half god damn it the smaller class almost certainly mean that boring wasn't able to prove that it could meet the passenger minimum outline of the contract so this is some of the videos people took obviously of the traffic and people mocking it and again like i said i think most of the reason why people are mocking is because it's not really actualized of how it should be obviously the the what what they need is basically for self-driving without for self-driving these boring tunnels aren't going to work or not going to work as well as intended because you need some autonomy because the autonomy will basically increase the, the the speed that they can go at and the distance um and basically takes away the need to have drivers and you can basically make sure that you kind of quicken the journey time right because you could basically have them especially if they're you know computer there's all self-driving vehicles so like like most trains you could basically ensure that they all arrive at a certain time that they 
that at a certain time so that basically there will be no sense of traffic in there at all um, so that will obviously help and it's obviously someone's tweet said Elon Musk said tunnels would fix traffic congestion but even a sh shitty Las Vegas tunnel is already getting backed up who could have predicted this so I'll play the video quickly is it boring driving down here with all of this uh -huh. oh my there's a traffic jam oh you know what when it's busy with new people constantly it's not too bad uh, but when it's slow and you're by yourself it, it kind of gets a little boring sometimes just circling around constantly so is it in 2022 we seriously need to end asking uber drivers or taxi drivers how their job is going and how boring it is and do they have other stuff that they're doing we need to end that conversation starter that needs to be an end of a conversation starter like ask more interesting questions i don't know have you got kids are you married what's your view on this have you seen that tv show Let, let's have more interesting conversation with a cab driver let's not just make them into these kind of archetypes they just ask the same question again and again how long have you been driving is this anything that you do come on man mix it up a little bit please um it's in the same video right it's all the same i think they're all the same videos of them people looping around so basically people on the internet weren't that happy with the vegas loop um they weren't that impressed with it but like i said before i think most of it has to do with the lack of full self-driving until full self-driving is actually rolled out in the way that it's intended to that we saw on all those flipping um, presentations you're not going to see this vegas loop or these loops at all um work the way that they're intended no no way no way shape or form but I think the idea is solid. I think so far we've obviously seen that with tunnels, you can basically have more options for people to transport to themselves from A to B than you would do on normal roads. Um, but again, it's it's just the only skin side thing I think about it is that the fact that people have such a negative reaction when it comes to um, Elon Musk, they really seem to not like that guy. And um, I don't get it because I think one of his best traits is the fact that he kind of pretends that he's way dumber than what he actually is right he doesn't necessarily kind of throw his intellect in your face too much obviously he's got amazing projects that obviously would illustrate that the guy has an above average iq but he doesn't he's not necessarily like he's not an eric weinstein right that that guy definitely kind of you know comes in his own mouth whereas with elon musk he kind of feels like a he kind of tries to be a normal guy obviously his impression of a normal guy isn't that normal but he at least tempts to be a normal guy he's into memes he shares jokes online he can laugh at himself all this sort of stuff is really important i think going forward but yeah let's see maybe this um builds up next time and things get better for it over time but i would like to see this kind of rolled out i'd also like to see obviously get introduced in places like here in the uk we've got a clear problem with fucking traffic please save us elon um that would be great to see as well going forward but hey let's see let's hope and see so this is um let's just switch gears quickly and let's talk about what let's talk about yeah let's talk about this actually this maybe the best one to talk about not this one uh, uh, so this looks like Julia, yeah, Julia Fox, um, Kanye West's new muse at the moment, decided to sit down with Interview Magazine for another interview. It feels like she's going to do these all the time, maybe bi-monthly or whatever. But yeah, she's living a dream, so I don't blame the lady. So essentially, she sat down and interviewed to basically update her on her basically whirlwind romance. It feels like with Kanye at the moment, she's basically serving as his love interest and muse. I guess there's no title so far because he hasn't really said anything that, that solidly about it, but it does seem like they're moving very, very fast. It does also seem like Kanye has definitely let us black boys know that it's definitely a white girl summer this summer so hey if you've got a big batty out there and you like guys that <laughs> like tell dance music then let man know <laughs> but yeah um it's a white girl summer it feels like so kanye's doing the thing it looks like he's been fasting and working out a bit he's looking nice and slim nice and trim and yeah they're having a whale of a time so this is julia fox sitting down with um interview magazine basically detailing some of her time spent with kanye and the interview got as follows. It says, um, Judah Fox called us on the bed this afternoon in a heart breathless whisper, commanded our attention. It's easy to forget that she was once a dominatrix until she has you on the phone bending to her will. Let me see if I can get actually a thing that doesn't stretch from page to page. This is a bit annoying. Let me see if I can get another one. Uh, Julia Fox interview magazine, Kanye. Let's see if I can get another uh, Fox News. Is it, is, it, is it edge to edge like that? Oh, it is, okay. Fair enough, it's, it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? But anyway, it's just the following. Julia Fox, I think I'm going to call you about my date night weekly, maybe bi-weekly. How's that sound? The interview magazine says, good. Okay, I'll send pictures. All right, what's the bit I went to see here? 
Um, obviously, there's a picture of here of, of, of um, Julia Fox lying down on the table and Kanye putting a bib on, preparing to eat her ass or maybe her ribs. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, another one says here, um, tell us about your night on Wednesday. She says, Delilah, I had a date with Madonna, but obviously I, I invited Ye because they know each other. They work together and they respect each other as artists. Then Floyd Mayweather with Antonio Brown and a bunch of other people showed up. So obviously we had to do that photo shoot. Yeah, there's a really funny photo shoot with them together, sat around. It looks like some mad afters that you would have went to after a crazy night out in a club and as someone mentioned before it also looks interesting because it doesn't look that fun it's i think people when you reach a certain level of fame a certain level of wealth you can't really have fun the normal way that people do have fun in parties because i'd imagine most of your everyday life is quite fun so when you go to a party it's just like eh. it's a bit awkward a bit clunky but you know it was quite fun to see that random group of people together I still don't know who the girl is that's got the brunette hair who Madonna's kind of hugging when she's on the floor. Who's, if anyone knows who that girl is, because she doesn't seem to get credited or no one's putting her name in any of the pictures. She's obviously front and centre, but I don't think Madonna tagged her. I don't think Julia Fox did either. So whoever that girl is that's got the dark hair that's sitting on the floor, if someone knows who she is, let me know. Um, da, da, da. Interview said, obviously we had your faster pussycat kill, kill, kill outfit. She says, yeah, that was custom. My stylist, Pierre Rosenweig and Brianna Adora designed it with Ye's direction. They understood the assignment and they turned me out. Madness. Look at that. Um, uh, Russ Mayer's Vixen. Have you ever seen the movie? She says, yeah, when I was 16. Well, why did you eat at Delilah? When did you eat at Delilah? Um, I kept getting up and every time I came back, why all that became something else? I ended up eating a Caesar salad. <laughs> Kanye's got her on the keto diet. It says, yeah, um, interview, were you obsessed? I wasn't obsessed with Caesar salad. How could you be obsessed with a Caesar salad where you sit next to fucking Madonna? <laughs> True. Um, how's the relationship with Ye evolving? She says as follows. You know, I'm so used to being fucked over relationships. So I keep waiting for him to disappoint me because he makes very grandiose promises. And it's like, how could he ever pull it off with all the other things he has going on? But he always does. Last night was a testament to that. So she's already in love, bro. Like Kanye must have that. If you know what I mean. Um, so clearly that's good to see. Um, it continues. It says, do you feel like you're a muse? It says, I always be some, someone's muse. What does being a muse mean to you? You're either born a muse or you're not. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, this is what it is. And what do you see as your destiny right now? Right now, the vibes I'm getting are very much about tolerance, kindness and love. I'm cancelling cancel culture and putting it into the, the... Okay, let's move back on this. Anyway. Let's go back to here. I want to touch upon this. Um... Oh no, is it one touch? No, one touch about this, isn't it? People shouldn't be defined in the darkest moments. If you feel like a good position, yeah, this is a good, yeah, this is a good one. What is that one? Yeah, but let's talk about both things. So, this response that she gave about how her relationship is evolving with Ye, I thought was really telling and something that I've tried to do over my life, I've kind of struggled to do. So, she says, You know what? I'm used to being fucked over relationships, so I'm keeping waiting for him to disappoint me because it makes me find a good great his promises, blah, blah, blah. So, it sounds like she's basically living in a moment and accepting whatever this is that she's going through with Kanye at the moment no so far I'm not sure sure they put any official labels on there I don't think they have let me see if there is there's a word label on here label is the word label there nope it's not is it no label okay um but yeah I don't think they have any official labels in terms of what they are to each other but obviously they're dating and um I've clearly had an issue over time with trying to always rekindle things I don't just leave things to just exist in the time that they existed in, which I think is almost way better than trying to go back and double dip in my experience because double dipping doesn't work. It's always, you know, it might work the first time, but after that, you just, you know, there's a reason why it didn't sustain the length of time that it should have because it just didn't work out. And um, sometimes because you know you sometimes remember your glory years or you remember the best of times that you had with somebody you can sometimes kind of make it seem a lot brighter or a lot rosier than what it actually was and i also think there is something to be said with being that person who's able to kind of leave people with good memories maybe not the be maybe not for the longest time but you was able to kind of be in their life for a short amount of time impart them with some good memory something that they can hark back on and smile and laugh about and maybe share with some other people and then you moved on and did something else similar to other people too again it's a bit you know maybe it sounds like a justification for being a hoe but i don't think so it's, i think it's more so about living in the moment <clears throat> and just being willing to accept whatever that moment gives you if it means that you stay with this person forever and ever cool if it means it was a one night thing cool if it means it was two week a month cool 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 but i've always been 
guilty of kind of trying to dip my toe back in again and usually for the most part nine times out of ten i guarantee you nine times out of ten has always failed and um it's kind of always led to me kind of again going through a little bit of crisis of confidence thinking maybe i overstepped which i clearly did in some occasions and just lisa sometimes some embarrassing situations and <laughs> where you start getting blocked on certain social media platforms you're like oof I think I misread this situation completely, which is always, I think, it, what's more embarrassing, getting rejected? Of, yeah, I think that might be more embarrassing than getting rejected because if someone rejects you, that's one thing. They just decided you're not for me. And I think I have a very black and white way of thinking about things. So I don't really think that deep into it. So it's like, oh, if they say no, it just means they're just not into you. I don't think, oh, she must be going through something at home. And I don't do that, that kind of cope thing that some boys do. Oh, she must be, you know, no, 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 no. If they say no, it's you. It's definitely not them, it's you. So you just move on. But sometimes when you misread a situation, that can maybe be more embarrassing than getting rejected. When you completely misread it, like you think what they said was meant this, but it didn't mean that. <laughs> at all <laughs> and you try and double dip and they say uh uh don't contact me and then they go far as to say hey there's a block you're not contacting me ever again and you're like okay cool misread misread no worries no worries but then again you just pick yourself up and you move along um you don't go and camp yourself outside their house or whatnot you know what i mean you don't do that creepy stuff you just need to move on so it's great to see her kind of mentioning a similar sort of thing and then this bit I thought was really interesting because it says here, yeah, what, uh, what do you see as your destiny? She says, right now, the vibes I'm getting are very much about tolerance, kindness and love. I'm cancelling counterculture and putting an end to this black and white thinking. Um, people shouldn't be defined by their darkest moments. As humans, we commit violence to each other. We police each other. We've created such a hostile environment, especially on the internet. That's why I don't read the headlines. Um, she says, you don't read. So you don't read the comments. She says, no. And that's why I feel like I'm I'm really good candidate for this position because a lot of people in my shoes would probably be reading the comments and freaking out i'm not trying to have everybody love me i'm just trying to connect with the people that are like-minded i like that but that also brought me on to because she mentioned cancel culture and i think kanye has mentioned that a few times and i'm intrigued by his perception of cancel culture because obviously he feels like he was cancelled somewhat when he was going through his trump love affair which looking back was ridiculously embarrassing basically saying trump is my dad and i've not had a dad in my life and he's like my dad and shit like wearing the red hat to just antagonize black people it just it felt like a real bad troll which obviously you know didn't really resonate with a lot of people basically led to a lot of people jumping off the kanye train but then you know he makes good music he makes cool clothes and so they jump back on it again but clearly he's got a a personal I won't say vendetta, but it's definitely something that he feels strongly about when it comes to cancel culture, because throughout his entire career, people have tried to cancel him for various things he's done. But it seems like he's also decided during his reawakening or career commitment to Christ that he somehow decided that he now wants to be the savior of people that are canceled using his platform in a, in a weird way, right? Because obviously he's in a position where he's kind of impervious to being canceled because he's too rich in terms of you know he's got fuck you money where he can basically say and do what he wants and he's basically inoculized yeah, himself from basically the consequences that most of us suffer from if we do kind of some harebrained things and of course because he's supremely gifted and talented in these various fields that he endeavors in it always allows him some leeway you know it was only just like i said it was only a few years or a couple years ago i felt like all black people in the u.s hated kanye and now suddenly he makes a good album he basically you know makes a couple of good songs and maybe says some crazy shit online and people are now suddenly in love with him so you know things kind of go to and fro but the interesting thing i thought about it was that this picture happened to get on internet with um kanye being seen see yeah this is the one kind of being seen in your studio with alexander wang and alexander wang as most of you know is a famed fashion designer who went through a bit of turmoil a couple of years ago when a few people came out and basically accused him of sexual assault basically accused him of being handsy accused him of being creepy and you know whatever this party boy um, party boy image he basically had in terms of his brand it, people basically um, um, you know this guy here i think yeah this is the kid he basically exposed the dark side of it right and let's quickly revisit the article here uh yeah redirect please if you can don't mind it yeah so this is male model claims alexander wang groped his crotch at a crowded nyc club in 2017 okay got it go away in 2017 um 
as a flood of other male models and trans people say they were too drugged with MDMA and assaulted. So it's one thing to say he was cancelled because he was being too handsy. But if I remember the story correctly, that's what I remember. Someone said, I think that kid might have said that he allegedly was given a bottle and it might have contained ketamine, come out and MDMA, I'm not sure what it was, but whatever it was made him go a bit loopy and suddenly he was in the room, suddenly he was getting groped and suddenly things were happening, right? So crazy shit, like stories that were quite dark in nature. Then if I remember correctly, first of all, he came out vehemently, denied it. He was obviously saying he didn't do it and then more stories came out and then begrudgingly it felt like he kind of accepted responsibility but obviously didn't expect didn't accept all responsibility because of i'm assuming some pending legal cases hanging over him and he essentially kind of moved on pretty quietly and silent behind the scenes and if i'm not mistaken too um i'm sure i remember seeing an article where he might have met up with some of the accusers and then maybe they kind of you know um you know he maybe read out a check to some people and they basically dealt with it behind the scenes quietly and shook hands and moved on but the accusation against him was pretty serious in the same sense when it comes to um marilyn manson marilyn manson i think was cancelled because a couple of ex-girlfriends maybe one maybe it was one maybe it's a girl from westworld the actress basically came out and said you know with the relationship with him was hell and he was abusive emotionally and physically you know again some really dark stuff but for whatever reason, Kanye's decided to basically stand next to these guys. And he did the same thing with the baby when he went through his thing with those flipping them crazy comments that he made that um, rolling loud. But with the baby, you know, you say words. But with these actions, I feel like this is a bit of a step too far in terms of trying to be the uncancelable police officer out there. Because as much as I have my feelings on council culture have always been that I hate it in terms of the structural cancel culture that especially happens in music or happens in entertainment where if you do something wrong the industry decides to end your career so they take away your jobs they don't hire you anymore you can't go and audition you don't get invited to put like all these things you don't do so you basically have no ability of putting food on your table and supporting your family Whereas the counterculture that I'm a, no, counterculture, what, what I prefer to see, especially the structural one, it happened even with 6 9 right? 6 9 obviously, you know, the, the rapper that, you know, famously went and testified against the entire gang that he came up with and basically gave people double, double digit flipping life sentences and stuff. Obviously, he's a piece of shit, right? Clearly, no one should be doing that, especially if you commit yourself to that lifestyle. You shouldn't be going around and snitching on the people that you kind of do the crime with. You should be able to take your time like a man. You know, you, you accept the fruits of that lifestyle that it gives you. You should just accept the consequences which might be death in prison but he obviously didn't want that and he obviously snitched cool we cannot like him as a society we can say that we don't want to listen to his music as a culture we might say hey we're gonna make a stand and not listen to it maybe go out and pick it and protest cool but i don't think the in the industry the music industry should be allowed to basically not allow him to put his song on a playlist not allow him to perform in certain venues not book him at certain shows i think that cancellation is whack i'm not a fan of it at all if the customers if the public decide that they don't like what you have to serve anymore they don't like the work that you present and they all kind of turn their back on you cool that's no problem but i don't like the industry deciding that you can't have a career or that you can't eat and you can't do this so i understand the sentiment that connie is coming from where these people who made them made mistakes or made errors have now have no ability to kind of do what they love or do what kind of allows them to support their family but there's also an element of me that feels like for you and I, when it comes to our actions, there's always a consequence that we have to kind of suffer through. We have to kind of walk through. We kind of have to endure. There's no just waking up and it just goes away. Whereas with this, when it comes to this sort of stuff and seeing Kanye sit, sat down with, you know, Alexander Wang, considering kind of what he was obviously accused of, it just feels like a, it just feels a bit, not say infantile, but it just feels like a little bit of a naive way to look at cancel culture as if like, oh, he's a great artist, he obviously contributed a lot to fashion, he's obviously somebody that people love, but in terms of this gross thing that he did, he needs to kind of account for that gross thing first, and then when people, the society decides it's okay to get him back to society, welcome back. But this idea that you kind of want to thrust somebody front and center and say, no, he's uncanceled because I said so, that's whack. Industry-wise, again, I'm not a fan of it, if like New York Fashion Week have decided not to run any shows or brands are pulling out in terms of sponsoring him, again, these are all consequences of your actions, fair enough, but cancel culture should always kind of be <clears throat> left in the hands of the consumers of the customers they should decide if you ha want to have a career or not have a career it shouldn't be in the hands of industries and it also shouldn't be in the hands of one singular person that kind of has to be like hey you know for instance like you don't see him positioning the victims of this crime next to him right he's not doing that 
he's got the person that obviously did the crime allegedly sat next to him and it just feels a little bit it feels whack man i'm not gonna lie especially being a fan of kanye and obviously loving what he's done over the years and especially when it comes to creatively i'm just not a fan of it i, I understand the argument about it i understand we have to live in a world where people because the, the bad thing about cancer culture at the moment is that there is no kind of path to redemption so obviously what i was what he did was super dark and i think personally for me if you're if you've got that kind of darkness in you again allegedly that would lead you to go and spike someone's drink in order to take advantage of them sexually i don't think you could ever take that away so you're always you're a bit of a writer for me that's a wrong and stuff like yeah you, know, you maybe go you do some fraud um i don't know you rob someone's house for a laptop and you sell it because you don't have any money to pay your rent minor thing right in in the scope of things but you going out and assaulting somebody like that in that way shape or form that's darkness that i can't even be around and if your path to redemption is there cool but you do it on your own but also i feel like there needs to be like a path to redemption in all things in life there needs to be a way for you to kind of be able to kind of atone for your sins because if not what's the point of living right because we're all going to make mistakes we're not obviously not to that level but we're all going to make some level of a mistake we have to be able to kind of rectify those mistakes in some way shape or form but so far as a society we live in it seems like it's one strike and you're out you do one thing that people don't like and immediately they write you off and there's no way of you coming of coming back into people's good graces unless your friends kind of gather around you and kind of huddle you in and say no no no, no we're going to support this person which they don't usually so it's maybe admirable in kind of doing it that way because people don't do that in most walks of life even just in our walk of life regular people let, let alone when it comes to entertainment people who have sponsors and brands and agents and managers in their ear telling them not to stand with that person because they're bad for business so the fact that he's doing that anyway is a good thing but i still think you know i'd much rather him seeing you know sitting down with maybe the people that were victims of this crime and maybe trying to see if there's anything you can do to help them out in that way shape or form or maybe reconciling with these people behind the scenes that would be a far better use of his time than just you know sitting up there trying to basically say no i've decided to uncancel him because reading this interview with julia fox it feels like that's definitely something that he's been speaking about quite often um when it comes to uh how he views society and how he wants to kind of change things right which again i understand because he's got a personal attachment to it because he's been through a lot of things himself right but i just i don't know man. i'm just not a fan of this I, I, I don't like it i don't like it one bit especially regarding the crime you know supposedly this guy's going around drugging people in parties so he can take advantage of sexually and now you want to sit next to him and say he's uncancelled because what he makes cool pants he makes cool trainers he makes cool jackets like it's like nah that's that's i'm not for that at all i'm not gonna be honest i'm just not for that <clears throat> Um, but, but yeah maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong if if you think i'm wrong let me know in the comments down below if you disagree with that and you want to live in a world where you know in a Kanye's world where people are basically you know allowed to make mistake after mistake and no consequences kind of can come at their feet please say that um but so far for me i feel like you know there's a lot more of atonement my man needs to do if he did what he's allegedly meant to have done because that doesn't sound too gucci when it comes to me mate it doesn't sound too gucci uh Da, da, da. what is it that uh, why is she coming like between you two okay yeah this what she said here again i want to read this other bit because i don't know she's saying a lot here going on here uh it says yeah so what was last night like i didn't know what was going on i was just given an address and it was this enormous futuristic warehouse in downtown la we went inside and through this tunnel into a huge room with dim lights yay loves to play with light and tell darkness he decided to put on zola and i was like there's no way that there's everyone's going to just stop and watch a movie 30 seconds in everyone has stopped talking and started watching yelling commentary and um, laughing dave Chappelle fucking loved it oh wow dave Chappelle was there amazing it was such a special moment to include zola in our narrative bruv that's what you want to do in it if you got money in it that's what you want to do be able to just that's that's actually fun stuff right be able to be around with your friends put on an impromptu screening of zola in a random la warehouse sat next to your new tang um it says here what does zola mean for you narrative i think it's in the moment that he felt really inspired by something that i had shown him we watched zola the second time we hung out from zola it was slave play in new york and now we're here uh, who was there last night? Dave Chappelle, Marilyn Manson, Naomi Campbell, the actor from the new Batman, bloody hell, Robert Pattinson, right? Cameron, um, Jake Donahue from Salem, Andrew Richardson from Richardson Magazine, Richie Sazman, all my friends came, Richie H. Sashimi and Marilyn Manson, and they really nice heart to heart. I wonder if, I wonder how many bumps of coke we had in that event. Um, what were you wearing? She says, I was wearing these on a blend shell, got bag and boots, the motto pants are these on the top is Margella. What did you do after the movie? There was a music video shoot with Pusha T. Yeah, did his thing because he is his song with Pusha. 
he did this thing because actually talks <laughs> madness. Uh, what was the wildest thing that's what was the wildest thing he's dreamed up that you're seeing come to life between you two? He says, My transformation after meeting him a couple of days later, all my shit was in boxes, gone. It was cathartic. It wasn't like I was just packing all my old clothes, it was like I was picking up my old life. It was like making that very conscious decision to really put everything in a box and let it go in the past. We're learning on Fox News that you've boxed your life up and you're moved and you're in Yay World now. Yeah, it's let's be honest, why not? So um, that's what we do in Fox News. Yeah, I'm really surrendering. Yeah, this is the bit I said about, you know, accepting situations for what they are and enjoying them in a the moment when it comes to relationships and just meeting people. She says, Julia Fox here, she says, I'm really surrendering for someone like me who's such a control freak and always so used to talk, taking care um, of myself to just let go and be taken care of is a foreign at this point in life. I've been the primary caretaker for everyone for so long. So it's a new sensation. But honestly, I think I deserve it. Even a month ago, I was just fucking like not getting along with my son's father. Oh, yeah. Remember that one having no help. And it was just me alone. I was so tired and everything was work. I just remember being like, I know there's gonna going to be a reward for this. Like it's so fucking miserable that I know I know something will God good will come from this. So I hang in there. And then a few days later, I'm in, I'm with Ye, and it was the most instant, natural, organic attraction and connection. I just feel really safe with him. It's a redemption story. I wonder if she's a bit religious because it does sound quite religious, isn't it? For someone like to to be so faithful in terms of life, kind of giving you some lemon at the end of it, right? Or no, some reward or some sort of um, respite. Because I always felt like that in my life when it comes to me going through difficult moments. I always kind of have that optimistic side in me where I feel like, hey the good times will come too. just got to hang in there because most of my life, especially when I've seen people that have kind of, you know, gone a bit further in their career in terms of, you know, um, where we kind of started from at the same point who I feel like I'm way more talented than. I think a lot of them basically were able to get to where they got to mostly down to persistence where I basically hung up and, you know, gave up or moved on to other things or maybe got discouraged. They just hung in there. And then over time they hung in there and their skill levels improved to the point where my talent doesn't matter anymore. They just bear out what they do because they've been doing it for longer at a professional level. So I can't really complain about that. But I think like a lot of things in life outside of those sort of career things, just in terms of hard times are mostly a persistent thing if you're able to hang in there longer than other people you are definitely going to reap the rewards of it but it's such a brutal thing to go through again julia fox the other day was posting screenshots of her baby daddy on instagram stories and ranting about how he's a deadbeat dad and all that stuff which again as cathartic and as relieving as that can be it also doesn't reflect well on you because you're the one that let him ejaculate in you you're the one that had a kid with him you're the one that tried to have a relationship with him and suddenly now it all ends it doesn't make you look great so clearly it's gonna it's one of those kind of weird moments to go through and i'm assuming for a young lady too especially something like her trying to get a hollywood career started to suddenly be a single mom it must have been such a weird time to be in and someone i think mentioned it earlier on julie fox also had a bit of a weird career because when uncut gyms come out if i'm not mistaken again if i'm not mistaken when uncut gyms come out soon after covid started right so she didn't really have a chance to even enjoy or bask in the glory of her cameo in, in flipping uncut gems that all the boys were wanking over. Jeremy, I mean, she didn't have a chance to enjoy that. She just kind of had to kind of sit down and stay in New York. And then I guess she stayed there, fell pregnant, and then suddenly she's a mum now. And then the career shifted again. Jeremy, I mean, it must have been such a weird time to go through. Um, so you can only imagine what sort of mental turmoil she was kind of suffering through. And now suddenly she kind of happens to cross paths with fucking Kanye West. And now she's his new muse. It's absolutely mad what life can do in it right what life can throw up to you but yeah big up her i like these articles i like these flipping diaries i'm not going to lie i think they're pretty nice and whatever happens to them in the future i think it's still cool that they're able to kind of share this little experience together and maybe it can kind of move into maybe a different territory i don't think again for Ye and kanye in general he doesn't do casual relationships it's either all in or all out so most likely they'll end up either getting married <laughs> in the next couple of months or they'll break up that'll be it it's not going to be anything else i don't think going forward um but yeah big up them too um they look pretty cool together the shoots are amazing um everything looks really really cool and organic they obviously seem like they seem to love each other's company so far and you know it's a white girl summer in it big bat is all over the place bruv big batties all over the place bruv um i think that might be it for the excellent Zing show for now that's episode number 541 thanks again for tuning in first time tuning in if you're listening via the podcast app of course make sure you hit you know 
all the links in the description obviously the Bossa Nova Civic Club um, fundraiser link hit that and obviously you sponsor or kind of back them there and if you're wanting to join the Patreon obviously link is in the description too and if you listen via the podcast uh, please give me a 5 star rating that would be really really appreciated if you can and of course if you're listening via the podcast app on audio you hear a song if you're just watching and if you're just listening or watching via YouTube you'll end right here and I'll see you guys again very very soon take care be safe peace